The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Well, good morning, One Hope. Well, I see a lot of faces that made it early today. I'm so proud of you. That just makes my heart smile. I figure if I need to be up, everybody else ought to get up too, right? (laughs) We are so happy that you guys have joined us here at One Hope and made it be a part of your weekend. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Michelle, and my husband Dave and I are the pastors right here at One Hope Church. And we just want to take a minute to say hello to you and let you know that we're glad that you're here. So come find us at the end of service if we haven't met and you're here in the um, house today. We also want to say hello to all of those who are joining us online. And what I love about being online is that you have the ability to help us do some evangelism here. That's a big churchy word. But what that means is we're going to share the good news of Jesus. And so whether you're in the room in this house or if you're at your own house, if you'll take a moment sometime this week and like and share this service that you can find on the One Hope Church Facebook page, that will help us get all the information out to your friends about what Jesus can do for their heart and their life. And it makes me so excited, especially when I think about what our series is for right now. We're continuing the series that we just started last week, and it's called Great Faith. And God has really been speaking to Pastor David and myself about faith. And we believe that God is calling each of us individually as a church family to have great faith. You know, a lot of Christians sometimes will say that they are people of faith, but there's a lot of people still that are unfamiliar with what it means to have great faith. And we can find all of those principles and we can find all of those directives for us right in God's word. In fact, I want to read one with you today. It's in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is. You say that with me. Ready? Now Now faith faith is. is. We need to realize that faith is always present. God is not the God that we call I was. He's not the God that we call I will be. He is the God that we know as I am. Faith brings the realities of God into our present, into our life right now, right here in this very moment for us to be able to have. And God wants that faith to be a driving push and a driving force in our lives. Remember, we talked about last week that faith is not an add-on for our life. It needs to be the main thing. We got to keep the main thing the main thing, right? All right, we can have add-ons and those compliments and all those things to our steak or to our vacation packages, you know, those things. But when it comes to faith, we're living in a time where an add-on faith is not going to be enough. We need to have that main course faith, that faith that's going to see us through the hard times, that faith can see you through the bad times. And we need that faith when we can't see, all right? Not when we can see. Sometimes when we can see what's happening, it's easy to say, oh, I'm full of faith. But when we can't see, that's when you've really got to step out and have that faith. 
So from now until Easter, we're going to be talking right here about having great faith. And we are believing for this room to be full on Easter. All right. We've got great faith that people are going to walk in this very house and Jesus is going to transform their lives. We've got great faith that the Holy Spirit is going to draw people to this place, to this place so that they can experience the love and the joy and the peace and the hope that they can only find in Jesus. If you believe that with me, let's take a minute right now and let's use our great faith and pray and ask God about that. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we want to open up our hearts to a greater faith than we have ever experienced before. We are trusting in you, and we're trusting in your ability to draw us closer to you. So will you speak to your sons and your daughters? Will you build our great faith today in Jesus' name? And all of God's children said, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We need some great faith today. Hey, I want to quickly just say hello. Uh, We got some friends with us. Uh, Holly and Richard Myers and their girls are here right here on the front row. Uh, They pastor Revolution Church in Gastonia, North Carolina. And uh, uh, I've known Holly almost all my life. (laughs) Uh, Her family was in our church growing up, and then uh, after her and Richard got married, they were youth pastors in the same town where Michelle and I were youth pastors, and uh, they are doing a great work of God. God has had his hand on them. I'm so thankful. They came in last night. They're, They're here on vacation. They said, we're coming a day early so that we could be at church with you guys. Come on. That's awesome. Welcome them. And on the crazy time change day too, right? (laughs) I'm praying that God would grow our faith more and more every day. And last week we asked the question, where does great faith come from? Uh, And we opened God's word and we found that faith comes by what we hear. That's what God's word says. It comes by the things that we say. And faith comes by the things that we do. It's not just talking about it. Remember, we had the chair up here. We said, I can talk, about, I believe in this chair, all that, but until I sit down in it, it's not fulfilling its purpose. We gotta have action to our faith. Living by faith is not an easy assignment, especially in the last few years that we've been living in. There's been a lot of obstacles to our faith. And that's why we said it's so important for us to guard those things, that we guard what we hear, that we guard what we say, that we guard what we do. I I gave you a challenge last Sunday. Anybody being able to shut off the news this week? Come on, I challenge you. Let's just turn the news off from now to Easter. Let's don't watch it. You, You can read about it. That's fine check it out but let's let's don't spend our time watching that same cycle over and over no matter what channel you choose to watch i I did it this week y'all i did it (laughs) i'm a news junkie i watch it all the time but i i did it this week and 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 if be honest i wondered if anything major happened because i really didn't even read the news I, i i just shut myself away from it. so if something major happened that i missed i'm sorry y'all let me know about it later uh but 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 you know what i made it and my life has been at peace yes. i've been at peace yes. anybody caught yourself or as we asked last week been caught by your kids with the words that you speak mm-hmm. speaking positively not words of doubt or speaking negatively you know the more that we guard our words the more that our faith will grow right. How about this? Anybody acted in faith this week? And I found myself stepping up and when I, pr- I prayed with some people this week and I prayed with more faith than I've prayed before. And I believe that I prayed boldly. Maybe you stepped in and you served somewhere or you reached out to somebody and you gave to them. Faith doesn't just talk about things. Faith gets out and does stuff. It's in action. 
Desiring great faith is not something new. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's not something new. In fact, we see in the scripture that the disciples asked Jesus about great faith. Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, the apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. Show us how to increase our faith. And the apostles had a desire to add to their faith. They wanted to increase and to, to grow their faith. And I believe that there are a lot of us here in this room and maybe people that are watching online today that would love to say, Pastor, I would love to have great faith in my life. The problem is that we live in a world that's filled with things that want to keep us from experiencing great faith. There, there are obstacles that we are uh, facing, obstacles that we come against. We have a very real enemy. It's the devil. He wants to do nothing more than uh, John 10, 10 says to steal, kill, and destroy our lives but i'm so glad that he doesn't have the final word on anything did y'all hear that he doesn't have the final word on anything the bible says in first john chapter 4 the second part of verse 4 it says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world some of y'all need to memorize that one. Y'all need to put that verse on your refrigerator. You need to take a marker and mark it on your mirror so you see it in the morning. There was a season in my life that Michelle wrote scriptures on the tile in the shower in our house so that when I got in the shower, that all I could see, she had three different versions of the same thing. It didn't matter which way I turned. I was gonna see that verse. Sometimes we need that so that we can preach it to ourselves. John 16, says, I have told you these things so that uh, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. Come on, somebody, that's good news for us today. I want to tell you, it's easy to get excited about great faith. And y'all can get your praise on when we're here together on Sunday. A real life happens outside of these doors all through the week, doesn't it? Come on, some of y'all got to drive on I-4. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> right? You, you got to deal with those things. There's, there's that boss. There's that neighbor. There's that coworker. There's the, that, that, that issue that you got to deal with. And there's so many things that want to hold us back and slow us down in our daily journey of faith. So, for the rest of our time here this morning, I want to ask us, what keeps us from great faith? What's the obstacles? If you got a pen and paper, you may want to take some notes, or you can always go to our One Hope app, and all the verses and the notes are listed there. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. And the scripture says this, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. The writer of Hebrews says that the gospel message did not profit these people because while they heard it, they didn't mix it with faith in their hearts. And so when it comes to obstacles to having great faith, some, uh, some of us are not mixing that with faith and that becomes a problem in our lives. We gotta mix it with faith. Let me share just a few obstacles to our faith and if you look closely, there may be one or more of these today that you're dealing with. And the first one is this, complacency. The promise that God makes to you and I, those promises, they are not automatic. They have to be appropriated by faith. Did you hear me? The promises of God are not automatic. They have to be appropriated by faith. Psalm 119 uh, verse 89 in the Amplified says this, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven standing firm and unchangeable. 
Now this doesn't say that God's word was established in heaven and earth, right? It says that his word is settled in heaven. So how does God's word get established here on the earth? It's when we speak it. It's when we say it, when we, uh, uh, when we speak his word. Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When we speak the promises here on earth, it establishes that on earth. Jesus said to his disciples in his teachings that, that when, when he was teaching them the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. See, the only way that God uh, uh, brought his will from heaven into earth is through faith. That's the way that we receive the things of God. It's through faith faith in him in our american church culture we've leaned a lot into the sovereignty of god that's a big word i believe in the sovereignty of god he can do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do he's the king i'm not he's in control i'm not he has authority to do what he wants to do yet at times i think we we, we become kind of complacent with that and we it, it, and we think well if god wants to do something he'll do it if he wants to make it happen he'll do it rather than us aggressively going after the promises of god you know god's word can be established his promises are true and they're for you so sometimes i think we need to contend for the promises that god's already made we're we're, we're acting like well if jesus wants to do something he'll do it hey he's already said promises in his word and if he said it i believe it and it's for me and i can have it so I've got to contend for those promises. Uh, with, and we've got to mix God's word and his promises with faith. Yes. Let me give you an example from scripture. God gives Abraham a promise in the Old Testament that he would be the father of many nations, right? And this, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the heavens. Through some obstacles, God brings this promised son Isaac and through Isaac that promise of descendants as numerous as the stars was going to flow out of Abraham through Isaac into the next generation and we won't go into the whole story of God asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac on the altar and all that but later God uh, wants uh, uh, Abraham to help pick out a wife for Isaac and so uh, let me just refresh you on the story real quick uh, Abraham sends his servant back to the homeland to find a girl that was part of their uh, group their tribe and so he sends him back and he says to the servant when you get to the homeland and you're there and you're bringing all the stuff and you got all of these camels whichever girl comes out and waters all the camels that's the one that God has chosen for my son Isaac and so uh, the, the servant goes and, 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 he, and he gets there and he's at the place and, and lo and behold, uh, uh, the, Rebecca comes out and she waters all the camels and the servant says, this is the one. He's fulfilling the prophecy, fulfilling the promise. And so he takes her back and brings her back as God's chosen one for Isaac. Yet the Bible says that Rebecca was barren and unable to have children. Now, if the promises of God are automatic, explain that one. God says to Abraham, father of many nations, just as many as the stars in the heavens. You have a son, Isaac. Isaac, this is the girl that's gonna be for you. She's the one that's supposed to be promised. Uh-oh, she can't have children.
It wasn't until Genesis 25 that Isaac begins to cry out to the Lord. He says, God, you've made a promise to my dad. You made a promise to my father, Abraham, that, that the seed of, uh, would come through me. That the, the descendants that would be as numerous as the stars in heaven, that that would come through me. And, and God, he, he began to contend in the faith. And, and then when he did that, Rebecca's womb was open and she gave birth, not to just one child, twins. Come on, somebody. God knows how to do it. Right. But it's not automatic. Isaac could have said, I guess my dad didn't hear right. Uh, I guess... You know, maybe mom served some funky pizza <laughs> the night he thought he heard that. Uh, my wife's barren. I love her. God picked her out for me. So I guess this is just the way it's supposed to be. Aren't you glad that God picked people of faith? God picked people of faith that would believe him and believe his promises that could be established, not just in heaven, but right here on earth. And that's what I'm hoping and I'm praying for, for you and for One Hope Church. God, help us to be people of faith. Increase our faith. Don't just let us settle back and say, well, God, if you want something to happen, you're going to make it happen. Uh, no, he's already given us promises and we need to contend for them. He said that he would strengthen us and sustain us. He would uphold us with his righteous right hand. He said that he would go before us. He would never leave us or forsake us. He said, if you're weary, if you're burned, and come to me I will give you rest he said that his grace is sufficient for you he said that he's got a plan for you plan to prosper you not to harm you plan to give you hope and a future he says that that by his wounds we have been healed he says that if we honor our father and our mother we will have long life he says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. He says that if, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man, there's so many promises of God. But you know what? If we don't spend time immersing ourselves with God and his word, we're not going to know what he said, and we're not going to know what the promises are that are meant for us. I better move on. Talk about obstacles to faith. The first one we said is complacency. And the second one I would say to you today is the noise of this world. The noise of this world. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 says, we read it a moment ago, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. People of Israel were presented with the gospel and the promises of God, but they didn't mix that with faith. And what I'm concerned uh, with us today is that we spend so much more time listening to the noise of this world rather than listening to the word of God that it has become an obstacle to us experiencing the great faith that God has for us. We spend hours on our devices. We spend hours on our phones. Spend hours on media, social media, TVs with 24-hour-a-day cable news media, and we're spending minutes with God. Hours with this other stuff, minutes with God. Don't believe me? If you got, a, you got an iPhone, not sure if the other guys do it because I never had nothing but an iPhone. <laughs> but, but, but in the iPhone, if you go to settings and you scroll down, there's a thing called screen time. You click that button right there. And if you've never done it, it's a rude awakening for you. You see the average time that you spent on your phone in a day. But pastor, I read my Bible app on my phone. I got the One Hope app, pastor. 
I'm listening to sermons and looking at notes. Okay, that's good. But click that button that says see all activity. And it will show you how much time you spent in every app that's on your phone. And I'm not throwing stones because I looked at mine and I was convicted this week. I'm just saying it's a great self-assessment of where you're spending your moments. You know, if you're spending more time on Facebook or on Fruit Ninja or whatever the new game is that's out there, <laughs> come on, somebody. It's an obstacle to your great faith. Right. We're strangers and pilgrims in this world. Bible says we're just passing through and we're here to bring the kingdom of God uh, here uh, instead of people that just repeat the noise of the world. Uh, we, we need to speak on a higher level with a higher authority and with a level of faith that, that ignites the people around us and brings them closer to the creator. Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Luke chapter 16 verse 17 it says this, yes, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for a single stroke of a letter of the law to fail and become void. The noise of this world, the, the words of people in your life will be spoken to you and spoken over you. But the question is, will you believe the noise of the words of people or will you believe the word of God and what he says? Will you mix your situation with faith or you will mix it with what everybody else is saying? How can we have faith to move mountains? If all we're listening to is the talking heads on the cable news or what your friends are saying, the noise is an obstacle to the great faith that God has for you. We need to stand up in the spirit. We need to stand up and contend for the faith and take authority uh, that God has given us as believers and stand strong in this world. Your faith should raise the temperature of the room that you walk in at your house. Your faith should raise the temperature at your office, not getting people hot under the collar. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about raising their faith level when you're around them. Uh, in your schoolroom, in your neighborhood, we should be carriers of faith. Sharing obstacles to faith. Here's uh, things that we've said. We said complacency. We said the noise of this world. And I got one more today. And that's our stewardship. It can be an obstacle to our faith. Pastor, what do you mean by stewardship? Well, the Webster's Dictionary defines stewardship as the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. How we manage our faith can become an obstacle to us having great faith. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says that, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Every believer has been given a measure of faith. And it's our responsibility to steward, to, to careful and, and responsibly manage that faith that God has given to us. It means that we can maintain that faith, just keep it at the status quo. We can grow our faith as, as we develop more of who God wants us to be, or we can shrink our faith. It all comes down to stewardship and care. What are we feeding our faith? That's the question. Great faith doesn't just happen by showing up at church, and I'm glad y'all showed up, especially on a day where they mess with the clocks. But great faith happens when we mix God's word into our lives with faith. Faith's not just hoping things are gonna be better. 
No, faith is developing the character of Christ in our lives. It's becoming more like Jesus. It's being intentional about what we hear, intentional about what we say, intentional about what we do. It's, it's stewarding the measure of faith that God has poured out on us. Will you open your heart and let's pray together today? Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your word that does not return void. Lord, today we mix that word of God with faith in our lives. And God, I pray that you would do a work in each and every one of us today. Lord, increase our faith. We're choosing to live in great faith. In Jesus' name. So we just stay right here in this moment with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Can I tell you this morning, if you've never said yes to Jesus, that's your first step of faith. If you're here today or if you're watching online today, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. It's as simple as first just acknowledging that, man, I, I've blown it. I've messed up. I'm a sinner. I'm imperfect. That's, that's easy to say. But then putting faith in what Jesus did on the cross. When he gave his life as a payment for our sins. That's what Jesus did when he came and died on the cross. He, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he will hear that confession. And he'll fill us with his Holy Spirit. And he'll make us a brand new creation. And so today, if you're here or if you're watching online right now and you want to say yes to Jesus, I want to pray for you this morning. I want to lead you in a prayer. Just pray this with me right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sins. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. I give you my life. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that are praying that today.